Welcome, welcome to the Legends of Galarian's first video featuring yours truly, since we're on the mood of Chiliax, and it just happens to be alphabetical order, Abigail Thrun. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, Abigail Thrun is otherwise known as, uh, hold on here, excuse me. Her title is the Queen of Chiliax. Pretty basic. Uh, uh, another nickname I've made, a uh, nickname I've made for her is the Red Mistress or um, the Red Ruler. That's just ones I've made uh, for her. But uh, in the game, she doesn't she don't really have like a, she doesn't really have like a nickname, just the title, the obvious title of Queen of Chiliax. Uh, again, all the content for this is coming from the um, Pathfinder Lost Omens Legends. So be sure to get your copy today if you're interested in this kind of stuff. So, um, Abigail Thrun, Queen of Chiliax. Her alignment in class, she's a lawful evil uh, female human sorcerer. Uh, she's she's pretty rough, and you'll you'll come to see that too when we get into the ring. She's she's uh doesn't take shit from anybody. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and get into the reading. Uh, not much in terms of uh other things to get into before that. Uh, she obviously is pretty chill with Asmodeus, which we'll come to see here later as she is ruler of Chiliax. So. With that, the reading. The thrice damned house of Thrun brought order to a bleeding and chaotic nation, ending the Chalaxian civil war in 4640. But its scions could never maintain order among their own. While the nation submitted to a stringent and brutal law enforced by the Hell Knights, House Thrun and its allies churned through intrigues and sabotage behind closed doors. Abigail Thrun II, future Queen of Chiliax, was born in 4692 A.R. and named by her mother to invoke the power of long and longevity of her own grandmother, Queen Abigail I, whose three decades of rule were legendary. However, as each of the five monarchs to wear the crown of infernal majesty, including Abigail I, met with untimely ends. Abigail II learned early to trust nothing, nothing except hell. Abigail's devotion to Asmodeus began, began early, out of necessity amid the turmoil of a home life marked by scheming diabolicism, or perhaps from comprehending that, like all thrones, she was already damned. It's said that Asmodeus himself responded by sending a winged devil, Contessa Liraltha, or excuse me, Liriloth, Liriltha, excuse me, a lawful evil female Aranus, which you actually can see uh, on the left side. That's her personal Aranus that Asmodeus sent to her. her not nice little uh, childhood friend, uh, if you know anything about Aranus, to tutor her. Young Abigail quickly proved herself to be remarkably smart and even more devious, training with her own inborn magical ability to become a powerful sorcerer in a few short years, charismatic and visually striking. <clears throat> Abigail mastered the art of manipulating others for her own gain. Abigail would occasionally appear to be caught up in a romance or taken with a new celebrity, but such fancies were never unmotivated. The calculations behind all of her actions, even in adolescence, were in, this, were in the name of power. But in House Thrun, power is the only means to ensure survival. With yet another tragic death ended the reign of in, uh, in Frexus Thrun in 4709. Fun fact, the year that uh, Pathfinder First Edition starts is 4709. Uh, Abigail became the Infernal Magistrix, absolute ruler of Chiliax, at 17 years of age. Her words carry the full weight of law, although it is far from immutable. In fact, the frequent, frequently, uh, she frequently changes her mind, as has her former edicts erased from the books of Chilaxian history. 
overnight, even the most direst decrees become outdated and are no longer enforced. Keenly aware of her reputation as being immature, capricious, and demanding, Abigail cleverly uses this image to keep those who underestimate her off balance. Yet she controls the fractious noble houses and Byzantine bureaucracy of Chiliacs predominantly through fear. Against those who offend her personally, her favorite punishment is petrification. An eternity in stone under her watchful eye in the imperial palace. These ornamental traitors further serve to remind every visitor, courtier, slave, and fiend of the magistrates' supreme authority. Even so, Abigail's rule has faced stronger challenges to Chiliacs than any since her great-grandmother's reign. Abigail I saw the rebellions of the vassal states of Andorran and Galt. Abigail II has fought against the rebellions in Ravonal and Westcrown with mixed results. While her forces stamped out the so-called glorious reclamation in Westcrown, Abigail was forced to cede independence to Ravonal, and she has failed to reclaim the former colony of Vidria, which she still pollutantly calls Sargava. These defeats are a still festering wound as she ceaselessly contemplates how to, ex- how to extend her influence in the inner sea region. Next, we have what was known as the Bloody Reprisals. Through Abigail's recent defeats, these have emboldened some of her enemies, those dissidents who operate in and around Chiliacs are keenly aware of these setbacks and have bruised the queen's ego more than her power. Though forced to accept Ravano's independence, Abigail's victory in West Crown was far more significant than they realize, than many realize, excuse me. In addition to creating the Inferno Gate, a portal to hell that has allowed Chiliax to summon legions of devils to serve at the queen's command, Abigail's agents also crushed the powerful warriors of good that fought in the glorious reclamation. Terrified citizens whisper of the souls and bodies of dead champions and celestials given over to the, to the lords of hell, and of more terrifying fates awaiting prisoners taken alive, sail to the shadow-sworn land of Nidal. Worse yet are tales of the queen offering refugees from the Gravelands safety if they agree to sign contracts of indentured servitude, then trading these contracts to Nidal priests of Zonkuthan in exchange for unknown favors. Abigail's most recent triumph was seizing the opportunity to massacre the Church of Iomade uh, in Agorian for seditious activity. In a proclaimed act of solidarity against Tarbophon, Abigail offered the clergy a sign of her goodwill, heart's edge, the sword that Iomade wielded before ascending to godhood, which Abigail had claimed as spoils of war from the glorious reclamation. Yet a subtle trap in the legal conditions for the exchange tricked Iomade's faithful into inadvertently breaking the agreement and thereby committing treason, giving Abigail free reign to slaughter them with the sword of their own goddess. Wow. Damn. Okay. The queen likewise executed those church members brave enough to speak out in protest, and she keeps the sword as a trophy by the the side of her throne, still coated in the dry blood of a Yomaday servant's. Wow, she's really mean. <laughs> uh, just for a quick picture of that sword again. Uh, oops, excuse me, wrong one. Uh, so you guys can see it. Uh, did I not put it up there? My apologies. It will be in the video right here. Boom, heart's edge. While Chilax, Chiliax's capital of Agorian is firmly under Abigail's thumb, the Order of the Scourge Hell Knights, led by Lictor Tulan Vidoc, are a notable exception. 
During the rapid successions of previous Thrun monarchs, these Hell Knights took the opportunity con to consolidate a good deal of power throughout the city. Abigail has often faced opposition from the Order of the Scourge, and now Lictor Vidoc is investigating the recent turmoil in Chiliax. Vidoc earnestly believes that Abigail contributed to the recent rebellions, and perhaps even staged them for her own political or financial gain. Infuriated by the mere suggestion, and especially enraged by what she sees as Vidoc's swaggering arrogance, Abigail has contracted Jaque uh, Jaque uh, Jacqueline of the Red Mantis Assassins. Jacqueline responded by publicly announcing her assassins would eliminate certain targets that remain untouchable through normal political channels. This isn't the only time Jacqueline has contracted or you know, contacted Abigail. The Queen recently co contacted the Red Mantis with a request to eliminate the Radumi healer, Kasi Azaril, deeply offended by Kasi's godless philosophies and concerned that they will attract adherents in Chiliax, Abigail declared Kasi blasphemous against Iomade and Asmodeus. But to Abigail's surprise, Jacqueline reached out and informed the queen she had voided the contract. Taking things into her own hands, Abigail issued a public Ex uh, excruciation order, a process of public torture and humiliation, and in some cases, execution. Against Kasi, she would be found inside Chiliax at any time. Or should she be, excuse me, should she be found in Chiliax at any time? Abigail also has standing excru uh, excruciation orders for Magdalena and Martin Follows and any of their operatives in the Bellflower Network, or their allies among the Firebrands, such as the Sapphire Butterfly. The two organizations' efforts to free Chalaxian halflings from slavery, slavery is a constant thorn in Abigail's side, reminding her of the limits of her power and the dissidents who challenge her rule. The Bellflower Network is headquartered in Andorin, where it receives support from the country's abolitionist citizens. Andira Marasek, Andorin's current leader, has refused to extradite any Bellflower Network operatives or liberated slaves. In response, Queen Abigail recently placed an army of devils on the eastern border of Chiliax, responding to Andorin's outrage by claiming the army is meant to defend the people of Chiliax from the forces of the Whispering Tyrant. Andira's contempt for Abigail's blatant intimidation tactic is obvious, and Abigail returns Andira's hatred, leaving open war between the nations closer than ever. The final section is the Infernal Contracts. Many devils enter into magical contracts with mortals to provide supernatural powers in exchange for their souls. Abigail Thrun II is one of the few mortals empowered by Asmodeus himself to enter into such contracts with other mortals. Each of these Thrun contracts provides specific benefits and drawbacks. Little negotiation goes into a Thrun contract. Abigail insists that prospective Bargainers take her terms or go elsewhere, often to Agorian's excruciation fields. <laughs> Thrun contracts must be willingly signed by Abigail and the other signatory. The process often involves creation of two copies of the contract, one retained by Abigail and the other by the other's signatory. The effect of a Thrun contract is that of a magic item with the con contract trait. The item has no physical substance and cannot be dispelled, altered, or destroyed except by destroying both copies of the contract. A Thrun contract is automatically invested and counts towards a character's limit of 10 invested items. All Thrun contracts therefore have, as part of their cost, a fraction of the bargainer's ability to use other magic items. Abrogale, however, can enter into any number of Thrun contracts without restriction and some believe she is even siphoning the other party's investiture 
to increase her own. Once invested, Thrun contracts aren't visible, even though their effects can be. Although anyone has, uh, anyone who has one is constantly aware of its presence. If a creature dies while it has a Thrun contract invested, the soul is consigned to hell, and it can't be restored to life unless its soul is free. With that, we'll go ahead and move into the People of Note for Ab Abrogail Thrun. People of Note are Andira Marusek, Asmodeus, Hashim Ibn Said, Yomade, Jacqueline, Kasi Azarul, Magdalena and Martum Follows, the Sapphire Butterfly Organization, Tarbafan, Tulan Vidak, Zon and Zon Kuthan. With that, the side notes we have for her are for the devils on her shoulder. For her closest advisors, Queen Abigail chose her former tutor, Contessa uh, Liraltha and Gorthoclec, uh, a lawful evil male pit fiend the devil who had served her great-grandmother. These powerful fiends beside the throne do not control it. However, Abrogale herself is firmly in charge of Chiliax. She has worked tirelessly and ruthlessly to consolidate her power, and rumors fly that Gortholklek must counsel Abrogale against her most vicious impulses. <laughs> And with that, that concludes our review and overview and reading of Abigail Thrun out of the Lost Omens Legends book. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. If you're already a cardinal, use that beak, smack the bell, so you can be notified whenever content goes live. Uh, also have the poll here. Uh, I'll put it in the video here. Be sure to vote. Uh, I will go ahead and after 24 hours begin the uh, next or working on the one that is voted for. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.